Hello world, Noah here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install an iPad-only app on an iPhone. Before we get started, I just need to go over a couple of quick things. So first of all, your uh, phone needs to be jailbroken. You cannot do this if your iPhone or iPod is not jailbroken. I am not going to make a video explaining how to jailbreak um, because it's my personal opinion that if you don't know what you're doing, uh, then you probably shouldn't do it because you can uh, mess something up and then you'll have no idea how to fix it. So if your phone's not already jailbroken, you can look into how to do it yourself if you're interested or just skip over this video. But if your phone is jailbroken, then you're good to go. Uh, now the other thing is that I uh, do not take any responsibility for anything that you might do with this. I don't believe that I'm violating any policies because I am going to actually download the app directly off of the app store and then load it onto the device. But if this does, um, you know, break some rule from Apple or from the developer of the particular app that you're using, uh, this video is made for educational purposes only because it's kind of um, an interesting little trick that you can do to an app to make it run on an iPhone. But um, of course, educational purposes. So don't do anything with this that you shouldn't do. I don't support piracy in any capacity. And so um, in this example, the app I'm going to download directly off of the App Store with my iTunes account. Um, so there's no issue there, but please do not use this for piracy. Don't do any piracy of any sort, as a matter of fact. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you'll need on your jailbroken phone is a package called AppSync. There's a decent chance that you might already have it installed, but in case you don't, AppSync essentially allows you to run um, unsigned apps on your phone. Because what we're going to do is we're going to download an app from the App Store and then modify it very slightly. We're going to tweak just one character in one file inside of the app to make it work. But in the process of doing this, the app will become unsigned. And so if you try to run this on a normal iPhone, it won't work because we've modified the app ever so slightly. Um, but with this uh, package installed on your jailbroken phone, it will allow the app to run. Of course, this can be used for piracy. Please do not. There are ample warnings all over this package that say it's for legitimate uses, like if you have an Apple developer account, but you don't want to pay $100 to test your apps, for example. There are plenty of legitimate use cases, and I believe this to be one of them. So uh, go ahead and open up Cydia, and you're going to need to add a new source um, and the source is cydia.angelxwind.net, sorry. And uh, there is a chance that you might have this uh, installed already, um, this repository installed already, but if for whatever reason you don't, uh, you just need to simply add it. Very simple process. Okay, uh, once that is done, you'll now have access to Karen's Pineapple repo, and so we'll go there, and we're looking for the package called AppSync Unified right here. If you are looking to install AppSync, you should 100% install AppSync Unified from this exact repository. This is the original repository of the original developer, and if you install it from another repository, or you install an older version, then it might have some serious issues. I'm not going to go into that, but if you're interested, this article that says why PP Sync is awful uh, will actually explain what I'm talking about. You should also read this article regarding ASU and piracy, because once again, do not use this for piracy. Now, uh, we'll go ahead and install this, and it should be a pretty quick process to download and install, and we'll let that load. Give it a second to load. And then uh, we just need to restart Springboard, which will take a moment. Okay, uh, I'm gonna push this over to the side mm -hmm. and we're going to pull up iTunes because we need to actually get the app that we're looking for. Um, so I will move iTunes over there and resize it like that. Okay, um, and if I, I will unlock that as well. So let's go over to apps and go to the App Store, and now you want to search for the app that you want to download. Uh, I just went through and found this app called Jigsaw Puzzle Collection HD, 
It's an iPad only app and it's free. Um, so you can use it to sort of test this. Now there are hundreds of jigsaw apps on the App Store, so you know, unless you really like this one for some reason. But there are other use cases that I'm not going to say in this video of apps that uh, are only found on an iPad that I have wanted to run on an iPhone. This is just an example because it's uh, free and, um, you know, it's a completely offline game. So there's no issue of, like, violating the policies of this developer. So here's the app that I'm going to use for this example. Jigsaw Puzzle Collection HD. As you can see, compatibility compatible with iPad, not iPhone or iPod Touch. So if I just tried to run this it uh, on my iPhone, it would not sync, it would not open, any of that. And this phone has iOS 8.1 on it, um, so this app will work because it says require 7.1 or later. So I'll go ahead and hit get. Okay. Okay, um, so now it is actually downloading the app and um, it's going pretty well. Okay, so once that's done, the app will show up in the app section. Okay, it just finished, fantastic. So now we just need to make a very slight modification because to show you, um, if I click on iPad apps, it shows up, but if I click on iPhone apps, it doesn't because this only runs on an iPad. So we need to modify. So we want to right click on this um, and say show in Finder. And this will take you into your music folder, iTunes, iTunes Media, mobile applications, and there's the actual file, Jigsaw, HD, whatever. So what we want to do, I'm going to make a new tab and go on the desktop. So I have the desktop over here and I have that folder over there. So let's drag this onto the desktop and just delete the app from iTunes. So it's now no longer in iTunes, but it's now on the desktop. The next thing we need to do is change the name. So do get info and change the name from whatever the name is .ipa to whatever the name is .zip. Hit enter and say use .zip instead of keep .ipa. Then you're going to double click on it and it will expand the, uh, the app as if it were a regular old zip file file. Because as a matter of fact, IPA files are actually zip files. And I didn't mention, but I don't see a reason why this shouldn't work on Windows as well, but I'm just doing it on a Mac because it's a little bit easier. Uh, but anyways, so we'll open this up and you'll see there's some stuff in here. And we want to go to uh, payload. And you'll see if you're on Windows, this should just be a folder. If you're on, if you're on Mac, it looks like an application that you can't run but you just want to right click on it and say show package contents and within here you want to look for a full uh, file called info.plist right here and you're going to want to double click on it to open now I have Xcode installed so it's going to open in Xcode and Xcode actually has a nice plist editor but you could just open this in any text editor you want you don't need a you know a fancy program to do it but basically you're just going to scroll down and look for where it says UI device family. It's an array. And if you expand that, you'll see the first uh, element says two. So two means that it runs on an iPad. But we can double click on this and change it to a one. And one means that it will run on an iPhone. That's all you have to do. Because now that this is set to be a one instead of a two, um, iTunes will believe that it is in fact supposed to run on an iPhone and not an iPad. So you can save that and quit out of Xcode once you've made that one very simple change. And now we just need to go back up until we get to the folder. Or actually, we want to be inside of the folder. You need to select these four items, right click on them and say compress four items. You can't just take this folder and compress it. You need to actually, whoops, you need to actually take uh, the four items in the folder and then compress them. Now you want to copy the name of the folder and name the app to be the same thing, or name the uh, zip file to be the same thing, so jigsaw hd 1.2.3.zip, and then you just need to rename the zip file to an IPA file. And that's it. There's our app. Good to go. All we did again was make that one very simple change to make iTunes think that it's an iPhone app 
instead of an iPad app, then we basically undid the process where we re-zipped everything and we changed the extension to IPA. Now drag this into iTunes and you'll notice that it shows up and the file copies over to the mobile applications folder. But if we look, it now shows up under iPhone apps and not under iPad apps. So when you get to that stage, you know that it is in fact working correctly. Now at this point, you want to uh, sync the app to your phone, which has AppSync installed. Now this is uh, an incredibly simple process. Uh, all you need to do is click on your phone in the list of devices, and then go over to Apps and hit Install on the app that you want to install. There's no tricks involved here, because now that iTunes thinks that it's an iPhone app, it will have no problem installing it. So go ahead and hit Apply and it will uh, start the sync. It'll do whatever it needs to do, um, but you can see it's copying over Jigsaw HD, which is the iPad-only app that we just modified, and uh, now it's finished. If we look over here, we'll notice that Jigsaw HD is indeed installed on our phone, and if I go ahead and tap to open, it will go into uh, landscape mode here, Let's take this in full screen for a second. And you can see it is, in fact, loading the app. And uh, as you can see, the app is working. Um, it's pretty small on the device because I'm running this on an iPhone 5, and this was, of course, meant for an iPad or an iPad mini. So your mileage, um, you know, as far as, like, how well this, these games actually work, um, you know, may vary because they're made for iPad. But the point is... Uh, that you can actually run these apps at all, and that's pretty impressive. Now, I've no idea how to play this game for real, but uh, but you get the idea. So that's all for this video. You can do this with any app that is iPad only to turn it into an iPhone app and then install it, but of course your phone needs to be jailbroken and there's a little bit of uh, trickiness involved. Again, this is for educational purposes only, so Please do not use this to do anything um, illegal or wrong or, or anything of that sort. But as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Hit the like button if this video was helpful, helpful to you or if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you soon with some more videos. Bye for now.